The other thing that we will do is to ensure adequate representation. First, at the local government level, it will be managed that people with disabilities are represented at the local government level. And I can tell you that we shall also appoint probably the first minister with disability in Ghana because we have people with disability in Greetings, Dr. Sakara. I am the Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. Thanks for your initial remarks. Um, I have a question that singles by Samaray Shaija, later. Um, government has talked about a increase of about 97% of public sector workers up to their civil spine salary structure, with a lot of turbulence on the labor front. Now, there's a component of the new policy that has to do with an inducement package, which means putting out a um, system that enables critical skills to be attracted into prepared areas. Now, I'd like to know what the strategy of your government would be in order to roll out this inducement package to address the concerns of the labor front whilst ensuring that the country attracts critical skills into the rural areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think first and foremost, the most effective way of attracting critical skills into rural areas is a public service reform where ministries are limited to regulatory, regulatory and training and policy formulation functions. And those positions exist only at that level. When you do that, from deputy directors on and so on and so forth, and senior and senior that, jobs will be advertised in the districts that will be commensurate with those that are held at that national level. And those jobs at the national level will eventually be phased out. That is the only effective way you transfer skills. I've seen this done in a number of countries. Initially, there was resentment. Nobody wanted to take those jobs. But when they realized that the package was sometimes even better than what they enjoyed at the national level, they moved. When they realized that it prepared them better for their retirement pensions by being posted in rural areas where they could establish other side activities, they moved. And very soon, the jobs that left to small boys, they were sacking them to have those jobs back. It works, but you have to make sure that you have consolidated district budgets because you cannot send that level of skill to local government levels when there's nothing for them to wear. And this is where I think we have got our decentralization plan wrong. In fact, it has become a political tool rather than a development tool. Because with 178 districts, how do you manage that? Some of them are not even of the economy of scale that merits having a senior skill officer there. So we have to review that plan and make sure that we have a comprehensive framework within which skills transfer are moved from one level to the other. Now, let me come back to the issue of the single spine. I don't know why it's called single spine and not double spine or triple spine. But for whatever reason, I think one of the challenges we have is ensuring that it fits within our recurrent budgets. I think the estimation that we made with expectation from oil income are somehow not being fulfilled. And therefore, it's not only a matter of not being able to pay everyone, but that even the payments are interrupted and intermittent. This is also another source of disincentive, particularly on people who are living on pensions where they're expecting something to come at the end of the month and it gets held up somewhere. And maybe after four months, you get another tranche. I think those kinds of things need to be phased out of our system. And we should ensure that 
we get proper civil servants and train them and motivate them to be more effectively administrate the civil service system. This is one area where additional efficiency can come in the management of our budget. But more importantly, where we can identify those who need to be paid something and make sure that they get it. And we can identify that the different levels of scales are doing for the right types of scales. Because someone getting what they shouldn't have is a disincentive to someone else. And we should link that to productivity. If we do not see significant improvements, there should be consequences. And if we see significant improvements, there should be additional rewards. Not having such an incentive system will ensure that we continue the status quo. Now, the other issue which I have to put for your consideration now is that if we do not have equity in the administration of the single service, the single spine, it will of itself create the incentives within it. Because many people are watching the amounts of money is being paid to people who they claim are the first batch, and then the second batch, and the third batch. If by the time they get to your batch, the money is finished, and you get reductions, that can disturb the entire system. And I think that we need to review the information available because many, much of the information still remains a mystery. You cannot get the tangible figures on what is the total cost of administering this and who and who and who is getting what. Those figures are not coming out very readily. And in the long term projection, what percentage of our national income will be spent on this? And how does it affect the balance left for development to create more wealth to be able to pay it? I think an open and transparent examination of this process is required for us to be able to administrate it more effectively. At the moment, I think there isn't sufficient information to be able to administrate it the way that it should be done. More to the point, there should be transparency. I think that transparency must begin at the top. We need to know. We need to know what ministers have and should publicly display. We need to know what MPs have, including all, and I say all, of the other small amenities. Because they add up. And these are indicators that send signals because when people watch and they see disparities, it affects their motivation and performance. And I believe that this is not only with respect to skilled people, but also unskilled people. We've got two final questions.